But look at verse 2 of Psalm 51. Blot out, we just saw. Wash away. Uh, Aksab means to thoroughly wash. That's why the, the um, Hebrew translation, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Now, the, Dave, the word that David uses is comparing what God does to something that was common in Jerusalem 3,000 years ago. Back then, if you had uh, your clothing needing to be washed, and by the way, in the ancient world, clothing was thought to be an extension of the person. Uh, your, your clothing, uh, when God says that your righteousness is like filthy rags, what he's saying is your inward condition uh, is just like if you were wearing just vile, filthy, uh, sodden clothing. And so this idea of washing clothes doesn't mean he's taking sin and putting it away from himself. David is saying, I need to be washed like clothes. I look on my sin as permeating even my clothing. And so he uses this, this graphic picture. Now, how did they wash clothes back then? Well, they, they would take their dirty clothes that needed a complete cleansing and they would dunk them in the cold water of their ponds and streams and they would beat them. They would, they would beat kind of like our agitator uh, uh, washing machines do, only they actually literally would beat. The, you can still see them do this in primitive parts of the world. They, they put the clothing, they wet it on the, in the river, they put it on the rock, and they just have these, these various devices that they beat on the clothing, put it back in the water, rinse it out, beat on the clothing. He says, I need to be on the rocks. I need to be beaten. And then I need to be put out in the sun to be bleached. I need that complete cleansing. Well, how do we get it? Great verse. You don't need to turn there because we're going to come right back to Psalm 51. Let me read it to you. It says in Revelation 1.5, Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins, not by beating us with a stick on a rock, but Revelation 1.5 says, with his own blood. Or, uh, Ephesians 1 7 says the same thing. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the remission of sins. They're gone. And, and David says, Wash them away thoroughly. Put me in the cold water. Beat me on the rocks. Do whatever, like my clothing. I want to be thoroughly washed. And then look at the end of verse 2. Blot out, wash away, and cleanse, the end of verse 2 says. And cleanse me from my sin. This word used by David stresses a whole different part. The blot out was like a bunch of written records that need to be wiped out. The, the wash was like dirty clothing that needed to have extreme measures. But this, this cleansing speaks of uh, and stresses the ceremonial cleansing so that his sin wouldn't keep him or others from being able to come before God. Remember all of God's rules? If you did some infraction, some thing that made you unclean, you couldn't come into the tabernacle. You couldn't come into the temple. You were barred from it. And you could contaminate others. So David here uses the word taher, which means clean me so I don't contaminate anyone else. David did not want to hinder anyone else by what he had done. And this is an acknowledgement that sin contaminates everything. Our souls, our lives, our homes, our society. And David says, cleanse me of my contamination so no one else will get defiled by my life. So he didn't just want the record of his sins gone. He didn't even want the stain of his sins gone. He wanted the effects that would exclude himself and others from fellowship with God. He wanted that away too. Kind of like the cloud removed. Kind of like the restriction of, of boldly coming with joyful, confident assurance to God. He said, I, I want anything that hinders me from coming before you removed. 